What is going on, everyone? Back to one of my favorite YouTube series to make. This is the RLCS recap of week three league play for season nine. God, there is a lot to talk about, a lot of good stuff. We're going to be going in an in depth analysis on basically everything that happened over this last weekend of RLCS. Let you guys know what you missed, talk about all the matches, why some teams won and lost. Just a lot of good stuff. A lot of good matches happened. As always, if you guys do enjoy, make sure to hit subscribe so I can keep doing more of these. Without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so to, let's just start off. We had C9 versus Flight. Now, this is a very, very boring match to watch. We all thought at the beginning of this that this was going to be the fight for the bottom, that auto-relegation spot. A lot of people had Flight winning this because prior to this game, we have seen nothing out of Cloud9, and we've seen a little bit out of Flight. Back when Flight almost beat Pittsburgh Knights and got reverse swept, De again, definitely a, a game Flight should have won. They're gonna they're gonna be kicking themselves for throwing that and they showed that Seabass and Rapid when they're on point They really have good offense They have shown that they could be a good team and we thought that they were gonna prevail against cloud nine here But cloud nine, I don't want to say that their Offense was good per se because it wasn't they were still a very scuffed team. They looked really shaky uh, A lot of misplays that flight just couldn't capitalize on flight was just playing bad it was slow. Like, if you compare this game to any other RLCS game, they just looked like they were completely outclassed. Or they just looked like they were moving so slow. I mean, I, I wanted to fall asleep. Like, I've had more fun watching my dog rub his asshole on my carpet than I have watching this game. It just definitely a step down but i'm glad we got that one out of the way first so then we can get into some of the really good matches like rogue versus sonic now sonic absolutely killed it this was basically shock versus first killer both of them played so well i will admit first killer didn't play it like we thought he was gonna play i think first killer did not perform well uh Kronovi performed very well wonder played terrible and then sonic Sathu and dapper played played good too right just as you'd expect them to play at the rlcs level um nothing too outstanding from them but shock oh my goodness she he was a one-man army he carried he just, he just put dapper and sathu in his level three backpack and just ran home with this game it was it was fantastic shock put up a really good performance and he's honestly looking like one of the top players in north america right now which is amazing to say because shock just came out of nowhere at the beginning of this season no one had even heard of him he was obviously a good rival series player but um no one knew he was gonna he was gonna start off this strong and he, he's continuing this this assault every single week he's just taking down one big name after another so a lot of credit to shock looking like an insanely good player insanely solid i can see him being picked up by a bigger org like if cloud nine did a roster change i could see them maybe picking him up uh at the end of this season again that's just a, a theory i have rumors we can get into rumors later but shock shock is uh, i don't expect shock to stay on this team i expect him to just like Chicago, who got mo who went from Evil Geniuses to G2 the next year, I, I expect Shock to move up because he's just that good. And then we have G2 versus Flight. <laughs> like, where did this come from? Flight played terrible against C9, and then this they played the absolute best Rocket League that they ever have. Now, the scoreline doesn't look it. There's a couple things that I want to talk about when, when it comes to Flight and United. So we're going to talk about this G2 Flight game and NRG United game at once flight and united looked bad they looked really bad and then flight played the best rocket league they ever have against g2 and they were insane they were keeping up to speed up to pace with like g2 who is arguably the fastest team in the world maybe maybe dignitas but it's a toss-up they're both very fast so aggressive and g2 did not let up for a second the only reason g2 lost the game is because flight played like a top four team in the world then united it wasn't the best we've ever seen them but it was an insanely good performance one of the best we've seen them for sure they put an insane assault on nrg and pushed them back they forced turbo pulsa to have some misplays um just very good stuff coming out from flight and united but i want to really highlight this even when these two teams are playing at arguably their best they still could only take one game off of G2 and NRG. That's how dominant these two teams are. G2, they just could not match their speed. They could for one game, but not for two others. G2 came out with the win. NRG, they just could not get the ball away from Justin. And Tur Turbo was having misplays left and right. Like, I think Turbo did not play 
the best he ever has, but even when Energy's not playing the best and United's playing one of their best, you can only take one game off of them. I really want to highlight this, that these two teams are just insane, G2 and NRG. They're monsters. I think that they are easily, without question, the top two teams in North America. I think that the, there's only one other team that rivals them, and it's Dignitas. And we're going to get into that later. I think Reciprocity definitely looks shaky this week. But yeah, I I can't stress enough just how dominant these two teams are. And I think the G2 flight game is one of the most fun matches I've watched. It is probably the fastest paced game that we've ever seen in RLCS. Flight, we had no clue that they could play up to this speed. G2, they were just run and gun. Oh, go, go, go. They never let up for a single second. It was, it was just so much fun to watch. Like, when you compare the G2 flight game to the C9 flight game, the ball is moving at legit double the speed. These guys are going for just insane fast reads, fast touches. So much fun to watch. I, I recommend that the G2 flight game everyone watch, as well as the United uh, NRG game. And a lot of people are giving credit to Rizzo, Rizzo MVP, blah, blah, blah. But I, another thing that I wanted to talk about is um, Rizzo and Illusion, Illusion on Ghost. Well, now we'll start talking about PK Ghost. Uh, Rizzo and Illusion were looking like very dominant players today, but now not to take away from how good they were playing, you got to remember why they were able to play so well, what allowed them to play at their very best. And the answer to that is JNAPS and Atomic. JNAPS and Atomic, now I want to throw out some stats for you guys. JNAPS was a part of seven out of the nine goals for G2. He had almost perfect goal participation. And then Atomic had 100% goal participation. Atomic was part of every single goal. JNAPS and Atomic were instrumental in these wins. But JNAPS was playing that knapsack role, not because he was scoring so much, but, be but because he was feeding his teammates so perfectly and so well. Atomic, every goal, he was feeding perfect passes. He was dishing the ball to illusion and missed. It was just incredible. Those two players, I, I truly think really deserve the credit because Rizzo did pop off and they wanted to give him player of the day, highlight just how great he was, but Rizzo could only play like that if JNAPS put the ball on a silver platter for him. If Atomic just set the ball in front of the goal and said, hey, score the open net. Lots of credit to Atomic and JNAPS. But unfortunately, unlike G2, Ghost did not take the win. Uh, PK, they played extremely strong. AJ finally found his spot in the rotation for PK, and they just, not a lot to say except they just played well. It was just a good team versus an even better team. Uh, just a great match to watch. And then finally, the last match of the day, NRG versus SSG. SSG played so good, and I want to talk about Sonics as well in this game. NRG and SSG both played fantastic, all right? But... We started to think in last week when SSG lost to Sonic 3-1, SSG might not have been as good of a team as we originally thought, or at least not as consistent. Still a great team, just not consistent. But Sonic just played so dominant today, and then SSG still beat NRG. A lot of people are thinking that, well, maybe Sonic is just that good of a team. They went, I mean, let's look at the stats. They went, they lost 3-2 against NRG, so an amazing performance there on a team that was supposed to be 10th in North America, beat SSG 3-1 in a very convincing fashion, smacked Rogue around 3-1, then SSG beat NRG. So, all we can say is Sonics might be that 4th place team in North America. I, I really can't wait to see um, G2 play against Sonic. Uh, unfortunately, we, we won't get to see a G2 Sonic match until week 8. G2 Sonic and G2 SSG is week 8. That is so, such a bummer. Like, oh my god. Week 7 is G2 SSG. So G2 has a really hard week 7 and 8. But it's going to be the best. I mean, there's a reason for that. It's so Because the, the games are supposed to be hype. And they, believe me, they're going to be hype. I, I cannot wait to watch, see how G2 plays against those teams. Because I really do feel like, um, I feel like G2 can beat SSG. I, I think... I think G2 can also be NRG, but I also really think that NRG could beat G2. I think it's a good toss-up between G2 and NRG, who's going to win. But again, SSG showed that they can dominate NRG, so SSG's still up there. I really don't know who's going to be the number one in North America. I, Based on results alone, 
Let's put it this way. G2 is still the only team that's undefeated, but G2 has not had to play Sonic, NRG, or SSG yet. They have not had any of those tough matchups. So we'll see. We will see. And that is it for NA. And let's get right into EU. God, again, some really good matches and a couple really bad matches. We're going to quickly gloss over. Don't mind, uh, don't mind me. So first one is Dignitas versus Singularity. Singularity has the hardest schedule to start off league play than any other team in North America or Europe. They had to play Reciprocity, got smacked. They had to play Renault Vitality, beat them somehow, like great performance. And then they had to play Dig and Maus in the same week. And I do want to credit Singularity on this. They never got swept. They lost 3-1 to one to Rec, 3-1 to one, three to, one to Dignitas, and 3-1 to one to Maus. And then they beat Vitality. They came out of this with, with six wins. One win and six game wins. That is a lot better than a lot of people gave them credit for. They were expected to come out of this 0-4 with maybe three or four game wins, but maybe two game wins. Now they have an easy schedule. They have a win. And now Singularity is in a good spot to just take it easy. But they need to start getting some wins. They, they know that they can play at the highest level. They've shown it to us, right? These games were competitive. I'm really looking at Godsmilla. Godsmilla did not perform as well as he did last week against Vitality. Godsmilla was very quiet in these two series. And, and yes, I am going over both these series at once. And Dignitas, they, they look like a very dominant team, like one of the best teams in the world. I definitely put them at top three. And then Miles looked a little shaky. Cookser and Speed both can't defend the fucking ball. Like, it's crazy. Like, guys... When Cooks is on defense, it's a goal. When Speed's on defense, well, he had a bad week this week. His defense has been decent up until this point. Cooksir is an insane striker. I think he's one of the best strikers in the world. He cleans up the ball like no other. And he just can't defend. So don't let Cooks be on defense. Scrub Killer, honestly, I think Scrub Killer is one of the best defenders in the world. And best defenders. He's just an amazing, amazing all-around all player. He's a triple threat. It doesn't matter what position Scrub Kill is on, he will excel. So yeah, they come out with the win. ASM versus Endpoint. I quickly want to gloss over this. It was such a boring match to watch. Just like the Cloud9 and uh, Flight game, just a snooze fest. Two low-tier teams playing at an exceptionally slow pace, ping-ponging the ball back and forth. I'm glad it was over in three, because believe me, I did not want it to go to five games. Extra did not perform at all. I thought that Extra would be the difference maker, because he's shown he's shown us in the past that he can play at a play above the level that these two teams are at. He's proven that to us, and he did not show that today. I don't I don't think Endpoint should have won that. I really don't. ASM has always beaten them in the past, back in Rival Series. ASM is seven games to two against Endpoint until this week. Now it's seven games to five, so a lot more even with those two teams. So yeah, I just wanted to gloss over that. Then Vitality versus TSM. Vitality's back on form, baby. Alpha54 played probably the best game of Rocket League we've seen from him in his entire RLCS career. So if you want to go see Alpha54 pop off, watch both the Vitality games. TSM, all right, TSM didn't really put up much of a fight. They, uh, they got their asses handed to them. But yeah, Vitality back on form. Rec versus Veloce. This is, the again, the best we've seen Veloce play ever. Rec definitely was a little bit shaky, and I think that was because Veloce really put them in some awkward spots. Chazette did not perform as well. Uh, it was a lot of Fruity. Fruity was just popping off. Uh, Chazette was quiet. Again, Chazette's inconsistency, which is why I don't think I personally have Rec up there in the top three teams in the world right now, because I think that these top teams cannot be as inconsistent as Rec is. Chazette just does not show up when it matters the most, and I need to see more from him. I, I think he has the potential to be one of the greatest players in the world when he's popping off, but man, he was he was just slow today. He just couldn't compete. Uh, luckily, Farah and Fruity both really stepped it up. I think Farah was also a little shaky, but Fruity just was a monster, and it didn't really matter at that point. But Casio for Veloce. Who would have thought that a player like Casio? You wouldn't think any of these players, but Cassio stepped up and was the offensive god for that team. The problem that Veloce has always had is that they are a defensive team. They play, they don't play further than the midfield because all three of their players are defensive players, which doesn't make any sense. But man, Cassio really showed that 
he is a force to be reckoned with, and you should not disrespect his shooting. Veloce, this is just the cleanest games we've ever seen from them, and they've just showed everyone that they are they are here, right? They're not a terrible team. They're not winning by luck. They they're a good team, and they've shown they finally showed us that finally. And how Vitality versus Barcelona. Flakes, man, let me tell you, Flakes is, is a personality. Flakes treats his Rocket League cars kind of like the Me Too movement treats gender equality. He just says all cars are equal, and he just fucking goes with it. There's no difference between any cars. He played in, I don't know what the car's name is. It's the, it's the little Ghostbusters looking car. I'll, I'll put a picture up on screen. And <laughs> it was just funny, dude. Uh... I think Barcelona played extremely well. I, I don't think that because Barcelona lost, this is uh, it means that they're washed. I think that Vitality just looks so strong today with Alpha, and that they just clearly were the better team. But I also can see Vitality losing more games than Barca at the end of the season because I think Barca is a much more consistent team than Vitality. If Vitality can continue this this good performance that they had this week in these two games then yeah they can definitely uh they can definitely easily make top four even top two maybe above reciprocity but will it be consistent that's the big question will alpha continue to fit in with this team fairy peak played out of his mind i mean kdop was the only quiet one and that's really because not because he was playing bad it was because he didn't need to do anything kdop did not need to do a single thing alpha was hitting flip resets after flip reset out plays it was crazy Man, man was a monster. Yep, that is that is the recap for North America and Europe. I tried to go faster. I tried to because there was uh, two more matches and there's still a lot that I wanted to talk about. But this is basically it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I should have this video out Tuesday and then the, tomorrow. Yeah, Wednesday. I'm probably not going to have an esports video. I'm probably going to do a, a gameplay of Rocket League. Because I've been getting a lot of comments from you guys saying you want to see more Rocket League gameplay. Because I have not posted like a, a Grand Champ gameplay in a while. Since Rocket League Esports started back up, I've been fully on this. And I've been uh, I've been slacking on my Rocket League skills. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, we're going to get some good games in. And I'll have that up tomorrow if anyone's interested. I know a lot of people are here just for the Esports. But hey, do you want to see some Grand Champ gameplay? Want to see me sweat at the GC level? Then uh, tune in tomorrow. So yeah, subscribe if you guys did enjoy. If you want to see more of this, I will be covering, again, everything RLCS and just Rocket League Esports related, Rocket League at the Olympics, just all that good stuff. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.